Every hour, more than 100 million gigabytes of data are transmitted around the world. Yet most of this information does not travel through satellites, but quietly moves inside cables laid deep beneath the ocean floor. These cable systems must operate at depths of up to 26,000 feet, where water pressure is hundreds of times greater than at the surface. Corrosive salt water is constantly attacking. Marine life repeatedly collides with them, and temperatures fluctuate under extreme conditions. In environments that seem impossible for survival, these cables are still able to operate continuously for decades without repair. A single small flaw in design or installation can cause an entire country to lose connectivity for days. So how can humans create cable systems that are resistant to salt water, withstand immense pressure, and do not degrade over time? In today's video, join Mandarin Tech as we explore how undersea cable systems are manufactured, deployed, and operated. Undersea cables are the invisible backbone of the modern world. From intercontinental phone calls and global financial transactions to online video streams, everything depends on these cables lying silently in the darkness of the deep ocean. What is remarkable is that this technology is not new at all. As early as 1858, the first transatlantic telegraph cable was installed, allowing messages to be sent from Ireland to the United States in just a few minutes an engineering feat that completely transformed the way humans communicated in the 19th century. Since then, submarine cables have continuously evolved, from crude metal wires into complex fiber optic systems capable of transmitting enormous volumes of data with extremely low latency. Today, deploying a submarine cable is a large-scale engineering operation. Specialized vessels hundreds of meters long are equipped with massive cable tanks, precision winding and laying systems accurate down to the meter, and remotely operated vehicles to survey and work on the seafloor. Every decision, from cable structural design and route selection to how the cable is buried beneath sediments, directly affects the system's ability to operate reliably for decades to come. Manufacturing undersea cables is fundamentally different from producing ordinary power cables or standard telecommunications cables. Instead of focusing on speed or cost, the entire process is built around a single objective, maintaining absolute control over every detail from the factory stage. Because once a cable is laid on the ocean floor, even the smallest mistake can have significant consequences. The process begins with the central core, typically made of very high purity copper or aluminum. The metal is melted and drawn through multiple precision dyes to form a uniformly round conductor with a diameter of only a few millimeters. The wire then undergoes heat treatment to relieve internal stress and increase ductility and flexibility over distances of thousands of kilometers. Next comes the metal core drawing, stranding, and forming stage. Here, copper, aluminum, or steel is drawn through precision dies to create wires with uniform diameter and high strength. The metal strands are then twisted and arranged into a stable structure that evenly distributes mechanical stress along the entire length of the cable. This process produces a metal core that is rigid enough to withstand pulling forces over thousands of kilometers, yet flexible enough to be coiled, laid, and remain stable on the ocean floor without deforming over time. Immediately after the conductor core is completed, the insulation extrusion stage begins. The metal core passes through molten polyethylene at a temperature of approximately 482 degrees Fahrenheit, forming an insulating layer that clings tightly like a second skin. The cable is then rapidly cooled so the polymer can fully solidify. If even a tiny air bubble or microscopic crack appears, the entire section of cable is rejected immediately. The data transmitting heart of a submarine cable is its optical fibers. Typically, a single cable contains between 4 and 12 optical fibers, grouped into modules and arranged in a helical pattern around the central core. This structure allows the fibers to bend flexibly during coiling and laying at sea without being subjected to dangerous stress. Before final assembly, each optical fiber is tested with lasers to ensure that light signals are transmitted with extremely low loss. Finally, the cable is reinforced with multiple layers of polymer and steel armor. In a shallow waters, the armor is thicker to protect against ship anchors and fishing nets. 
In deep waters, the armor is thinner to reduce weight. The entire cable must pass rigorous testing before being wound onto massive drums and prepared for deployment. Before a single meter of cable is laid on the seabed, the entire route must be carefully surveyed. Remotely operated underwater vehicles, combined with sonar systems and high-resolution cameras, are used to create detailed maps of the ocean floor. The goal is to identify any potential hazards, such as sea mounts, deep trenches, coral reefs, or areas prone to landslides. Decisions made at this stage directly affect the lifespan of the cable over the next 20 to 30 years. Choosing the wrong route can significantly increase the risk of the cable being struck by ship anchors or gradually worn down by the surrounding terrain. Once the cable has passed every rigorous test inside the factory, its true journey begins, leaving land to be deployed into one of the harshest environments on Earth. Subsea cable installation is carried out by massive, purpose-built vessels designed for a single task, laying cable with near-absolute precision. The most recognizable features of these ships are the large sheaves mounted at the stern and the cable tanks deep within the hull, where thousands of miles of cable are carefully coiled into orderly circles, forming a vast metallic labyrinth inside the vessel. Before departing port, the cable is often loaded directly from the manufacturing plant onto the ship to minimize handling and transfers. This process can take several weeks, with crews working continuously around the clock. Inside the tanks, the cable is arranged into concentric coils, ensuring that when it is released into the sea, it pays out smoothly, without twisting, kinking, or experiencing sudden tension. As the vessel begins its offshore voyage, it moves slowly along the pre-surveyed route, the cable is released from the stern through a system of sheaves and winches, with tension constantly monitored and controlled by sensors. The entire operation is overseen by remotely operated vehicles, allowing engineers to observe in real time how the cable makes contact with the seabed. In many cases, the ship also tows a subsea plow that simultaneously cuts a trench and lays the cable. The device opens a narrow furrow in the sediment, places the cable precisely inside it, and allows sand and silt to naturally settle back over the top. Every foot of cable laid is the result of meticulous calculations, because even a minor error can turn an investment worth hundreds of millions of dollars into a long-term risk for decades to come. Or, data no longer moves by mechanical force or machinery, but by light. Fiber optic cables transmit information by converting digital data into pulses of light. At the transmitting end, binary data is used to control a laser source that generates light pulses, where the presence of light represents a 1 and the absence of light corresponds to a 0. These pulses are injected into the core of the optical fiber, where the light is confined inside the fiber through the phenomenon of total internal reflection. However, even light cannot travel indefinitely. Over distances of thousands of miles, the signal gradually weakens due to absorption and scattering. For this reason, optical amplifiers are placed along the length of the cable to boost the signal. When the light reaches its destination, it is converted back into electrical signals and decoded into data that users can read, hear, or see. Although designed to withstand some of the harshest conditions on Earth, subsea cables are not completely invulnerable. The greatest threat to them does not come from deep sea pressure or corrosive environments, but from human activities on the ocean surface. A single ship dropping anchor in the wrong location, or an anchor being dragged out of control, can hook onto a cable below, pulling it taut and breaking it within minutes, cutting off connectivity to an entire region for an extended period of time. However, humans are not the only danger. The ocean is a living, constantly moving ecosystem. Strong ocean currents, seabed landslides, underwater earthquakes, and submarine volcanoes can alter the seafloor in a matter of hours. A cable that was once safely laid on stable ground can suddenly be left suspended over a newly formed trench, subjected to continuous tension until its internal structure weakens and fails. In the early years of subsea cable deployment, engineers also documented cases of sharks and other marine predators biting into the cables. 
The cause was weak electromagnetic fields generated around the cables, which can stimulate sharks' electroreceptive senses, leading them to mistake the cables for prey and attack. These bite marks can tear the outer insulation, allowing seawater to penetrate and cause corrosion over time. When a subsea cable suffers a failure, time immediately becomes the greatest enemy. The first step in the repair process is to precisely locate the fault, usually by measuring signals from both ends of the line to narrow down the section of cable that is damaged. A specialized repair vessel is then dispatched to the area, carrying positioning equipment, grappling tools, and remotely operated vehicles. At great depths, repairs are nearly impossible to perform directly by humans. Instead, ROVs approach the cable, attach grappling hooks, and assist in lifting the damaged section up to the ship's deck. Their engineers cut out the faulty segment and splice the cable using specialized joints, ensuring electrical insulation, watertight sealing, and pressure resistance equivalent to the rest of the line. In rare cases in shallower waters, saturation divers may be deployed. These are specialists who must live for days or even weeks inside pressurized chambers, allowing their bodies to gradually adapt to deep water working conditions. Each repair operation of this kind not only costs millions of dollars, but is also an intense race against time to restore connectivity for an entire region before economic losses spread further. As technology advances and older cable systems can no longer meet capacity requirements, they are rarely discarded entirely. These retired cables still contain large amounts of copper, steel, and other high-value materials. The recycling process begins with recovering the cables, cutting them into shorter sections, and feeding them into specialized machines to strip away the outer sheath and insulation in order to extract the metal core inside. In many developed countries, recycled copper makes up a significant share of total copper production, helping to reduce costs and limit environmental impact. In some cases, older cables are redeployed in areas with lower bandwidth requirements, extending their service life and saving hundreds of millions of dollars in new investment. However, subsea cables are not the only path data can take. Internet satellites transmit data into space to connect places that fiber optic cables cannot reach, a complementary solution, not the backbone of the global internet. Meanwhile, subsea fiber optic cables quietly carry the heaviest load of the digital world. A single cable on the ocean floor can transmit hundreds of times more data than an entire satellite network, with latency so low that intercontinental financial transactions occur almost instantaneously. At depths of thousands of feet, subsea cables are shielded from storms, weather, and signal interference, allowing them to operate reliably for decades. Satellites provide flexibility and global coverage, but it is these data highways on the ocean floor that form the true foundation enabling the internet to function continuously, quickly, and reliably on a global scale. Subsea cables do not appear in our everyday lives. They have no eye-catching form, they do not move, and they give off no signals that people can easily notice. Yet it is precisely this silence that makes them reliable. In the darkness of the ocean floor, these cables quietly carry nearly all of the communication, economic activity, and information of the modern world. And only when a cable fails do we realize that the digital world is not as invisible as we once believed. It is anchored to very real, very fragile physical structures lying deep beneath the water. The next time you make an international call, send an email, or watch an online video. Pause for a moment and think about the journey that data has just taken. And if you want to continue exploring these silent infrastructures, technologies that remain out of sight yet keep the world running, stay with Mandarin Tech in future videos, where we will dive deeper into the stories behind modern civilization.